everybody, Jeff Antoniak here, Digging Deeper Jazz. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we've got something for all instruments. I know I say this every time. We're gonna talk about comping, which you would think is only for piano and for guitar. Everybody needs to pay attention to this. Horn players, you guys need to pay attention to this because this is about articulation and rhythm and how to move the band ahead and horn backgrounds, vocalists. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're a drummer, of course, that's your job is comping, right? Your snare drum, your bass drum is where the comping starts and then a great drummer moves it around the drum set. Comping, that's what I wanna talk about. Now, um, I just finished uh, Maryland Summer Jazz last week. Uh, I'm artistic director of Maryland Summer Jazz. This is our 14th year. And so I have worked with thousands and I mean thousands of adult students over the years through Maryland Summer Jazz and Jazz Band Masterclass. So I have heard thousands of adult amateurs and semi-pros who are playing and I get to hear sort of what the challenges are, where they're getting it, where they're missing it. And this comping thing is a very important topic for us to talk about today. And everything is gonna be based on the Charleston rhythm that we're gonna talk about. You can see it on the screen. Item number one is the Charleston. And it is simply beat one and the end of two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and. One, two, three, four. One, two, and. That simple rhythm, I would say, is the rhythmic backbone of jazz. It's there so much of the time. Your heroes, I don't care if it's Hank Jones or Pat Metheny or whoever you want to mention, they use this in comping. Horn backgrounds that's in there too. So let's dig into how to do this. And I'm gonna be on the piano a little bit for you and play some examples of this relative to a backing track. And you can hear how much we can get from this. Now here's the first thing I wanna to say today. We're not gonna be talking about pitches at all. We're not talking about voicings and thirds and sevenths and ninths and sharp elevenths and everything like that. We can do that, but that's not where it's at. I'm sorry I've offended some people right now, but that's true. This is about the rhythm. That's about the rhythm. You could slap your hands on the keys with smoke and rhythm, and it would sound just fine. You could play the hippest voicing on earth with bad rhythms and bad articulation, and that ain't it. And that's exactly the sort of thing that I get to hear every once in a while. So this is about rhythm. When you play piano, this is a drum. This is a tuned drum. When you're comping on the guitar, you're playing a drum that happens to have some pitches to it. When you're in the horn section, when you're singing in a jazz choir and singing those parts, you are a drum that happens to have some notes. That's the way to think about comping. So what I'm gonna do is play through a simple blues tune for you and just use some simple voicings, thirds and sevenths and ninths, you know, three note voicings. Let's keep it simple, three note voicings. Uh, but again, don't listen to the voicings, listen to the rhythm. Okay, so uh, that sounds pretty hip, right? That sounds like for real jazz. Was it repetitive? Absolutely. But have you heard world famous piano players do that for a chorus? Absolutely. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. That relationship, the Charleston rhythm, beat one and the end of two, we could talk about it as an on beat and an off beat. It's exactly what it is, right? That's like the perfect little jazz formula. When we have something on the beat to ground what's going on, but then a syncopation to, you know, give it that jazz feel. That's very cool. So what happens when we take this, those two little notes, keep their relationship to each other, but move them to different parts in the measure? Well, that's what we have here. Look at item number two. Here, I've moved the entire thing an eighth note later. So instead of beat one, we see an eighth note on the end of one. Instead of the second note being on the and of two, it slid an eighth note later to three. So now we have the and of one and three. Let's hear what this sounds like, comping that entire thing, that one rhythm over and over through the blues.
So again, that sounds pretty legit. So let's keep going with this formula. But here's the thing. It, this, this is not the easiest thing in the world to do. You notice that I'm playing short and short, right? How you articulate these is very important. Short and short. Listen to how I was playing it, okay? So it's one thing to sort of get it right, but now we work on the feel. Getting the rhythm is right. Getting the, artic you're getting the rhythm is important. Getting the feel is important. Getting the articulation is important. So let's look at the next one. Number three, we just go through the same formula. We're now sliding the Charleston rhythm now two eighth notes later. So instead of one and the and a two, we are on two and the and a three. Let's give it a try. So by now, you're seeing uh, that this is pretty hip, right? I mean, this just sounds good. Now, yes, we're just repeating the same thing over and over again, but maybe you can imagine where we're going. Let's continue the pattern here. Let's go on to number four. We've slid it now to the end of two and beat four. It just, it just keeps sounding good, right? Here's number five. We've now slid the Charleston rhythm a full two beats later in the measure. Instead of one and the end of two, which is what the Charleston typically is in uh, item number one, we're now on three and the end of four. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you're seeing that, that this is pretty amazing, right? You may prefer one over the other. Maybe you like number three better than number four. The bottom line is they all work. This is the kind of thing you should be doing. If you're getting ready to join us at jazzwire.net, if you're working on your comping, horn players, do this. Do this, that, that short articulation thing. Play along with what I was doing. It's really hard to be precise and nail all those rhythms, exactly right, exactly on the beat and swung off the beat. This is a fantastic thing to work on. So you probably figured out by now that we could actually mix and match these. You don't have to do a chorus of just number two. You can mix and match. How about if I do number one, number one, number two, number one? In other words, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 dot. dot. So just comping for four measures, we had a little form there. We did something, we did it again, we did something different, we did the first thing. A-A-B-A, -A -A. that's a little song form. You can do that with your comping. It's very, very cool, it's very, very cool. Now, here's the last thing I wanna introduce, is what happens when we start changing the longs and the shorts. I was always doing short, short with the Charleston. Dot, 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 dot. Well, what happens now if we do long short? Do dot, do dot. We sustain the first chord, not with the pedal, but by holding the keys down. What happens if I do short long? Dot, da, dot, da. It totally changes everything. So this one Charleston rhythm can give you hundreds. I, someone should do the math. Please, I know there's a mathematician out there how many variables are there with the five versions of the rhythm and then short, short, long, short, short, long? That's a lot. That's a lot of possibilities. And of course, we're not gonna go through the math factorials or whatever. We're gonna use our ears. 
But the bottom line is the combinations are insane and every one of them sounds good. So that's how you work on your uh, comping. So again, this is great for guitarists and piano players who need to work on their comping. That's your gig in the band. Sure, you love soloing, we love hearing you solo, but you spend 90% of your time comping. For us horn players, um, first of all, understanding what the bass and the drums and the piano are doing, the guitar back there, the people accompanying us. What is their language? What if we actually learned to speak their language? What if we actually paid attention to what they were doing? That's called teamwork, and that's what makes a good band, right? So I want the horn players to understand what's going on behind us and to be able to do it ourselves. That's where things get really powerful. So I encourage you to jump into this. And this is, you know, even for folks who have been playing for years, I want you to go through all the permutations of this and see what you come up with. You're gonna come up with things you've been doing by nature, you know, just naturally for years, but you're gonna find some very cool rhythm, some little, little corners you haven't peeked around. And I think you're gonna find a lot of uh, very interesting stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, I'm always happy to send you the PDF and uh, make your way over to jazzwire.net. We launched this fall, 2018. We have hundreds of people saving their spot from over 30 countries already. It's crazy. I can't wait to get started with you. Thanks so much. Thank you.